Logan, a voice whispered in the darkness. Logan. Logan's head slumped to his chest, then snapped upright with his eyes wide open. He didn't remember falling asleep. The uneasiness of the dream lingered as Logan tried to remember what it was about. His wet palms skidded across the brown leather on the barber chair. His pulse was slowing with the comfort of his surroundings. Then a commanding voice spoke. Logan. He turned to the waiting room and hurtled out of the chair onto his knees. Light overwhelmed every inch of the barber shop. The angel was cloaked in the purest white, almost diamond-like. His head touched the nine-foot ceiling. A gentle smile appeared, accentuating the love permeating his eyes. Rise, Logan. I am a mere messenger of the Lord. Why are you here? Logan stood. The Lord God knows of your servant's heart. He is sending children to you who need help with difficulties they face. Tell me what I need to do, and I'll do it. When a child comes for a haircut and asks, How high does this chair go? That will be a sign that they need help. What should I do? Step on the hydraulic lift and do not stop the barber chair until you no longer see the child. Um, Logan hesitated as he looked at the barber chair. I don't fully understand. He returned his gaze to the angel, but he was gone. Logan stepped to the area where the heavenly being had been and started to doubt his encounter, except for the amazing feeling of peace that lingered. A snore escaped Logan's lips, rousing him from his slumber. The Bible he had been reading was on his chest. He closed it, setting it on the end table before raising the recliner. Logan ran his fingers through his slightly graying hair, then looked heavenward as he pondered the dream. Chapter 1. The Faith Launcher Logan opened the joining door from his first-floor house to the two bedrooms that he converted into his barber shop. The oak floors were waxed, and everything was ready for the first day of the week. Looking into the mirror, Logan combed his dark brown hair with spikes in front of his punkador hairstyle, which was an updated version of the pompadour. A song burst from his lips. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I can't wait to look in the mirror. I get better looking each day. Logan paused and grinned as he stared into the brown eyes reflecting in the mirror. He winked and whistled the rest of the song while straightening up the barber tools. The sun was streaming through the slats of the bamboo blinds on the east side picture window. It promised to be another gorgeous day in the small farming community of Shelley, Idaho. A car pulled up, so Logan raised the curtain, opened the separate entrance on the north side of his house, and motioned for the people to come in. He turned on the lights to begin another day. Soon a mother whose eyes were bloodshot and surrounded by dark circles pulled her 14-year-old son through the door, who was dragging his feet. I hate to do this to you, Mr. Payne, but could I pick him up in 30 minutes? Mrs. Butterfinkel asked. His last day of school was yesterday, and Brady and Brooke don't get out until tomorrow. I need to run to their school for preparations on their awards banquet tonight. We'll be fine, won't we, Boone? He placed his hand on Boone's shoulder. Boone, who stood just four inches below Logan's six feet two inches, tore away from Logan and shoved his mother. Hey! Logan raised his eyebrows as he stared at Boone. Respect your mother, please! Boone looked at Logan and decided not to test him. He plopped on one of the black vinyl chairs and loudly tapped his right foot. I'll be right back. Logan rested his hand under Mrs. Butterfinkel's elbow, escorted her out the door, and followed her to her car. Is everything all right, Betsy? Oh, she tried to smooth her tousled brown hair. I must look a sight. Things have been a bit crazy with my husband away at work. Yes, I remember Jason's job requires him to be gone for long periods of time. Is there anything I can do? No. She looked down with tears in her eyes. I think we'll be all right. Boone's been acting up and was suspended from school the other day. 
Yes, I noticed a little aggressiveness on his part. He's been bullying timid kids. Betsy's voice cracked. My other two don't pick on him. Jason tries to spend time with him. When he's home, I don't know what to do. Logan touched her shoulder. I'll try to talk to him if you like. Betsy hesitated and then said, Yes, would you please? You can count on it. You better get in there. Betsy pointed to a shop. Boone's spinning around in your barber chair. I'll call you tonight and let you know what he said. Logan scurried to the barber shop and found Boone spinning fast enough that the chair was wobbling. He grabbed hold of the back and latched onto Boone's shirt to keep him from flying out of the chair. What a ride! How high does this chair go? Logan tilted his head and wondered if his dream was an actual visitation from an angel. He looked at his schedule and saw no appointments booked for an hour and a half. It can go pretty high. Will you show me how high? Boone's foot wildly tapped. Can you promise to sit still through your haircut? I can do that. Boone slid to the back of the chair. Okay. Logan placed a strip around his neck and then a royal blue chair cloth. Boone shifted back and forth and then settled in. I'm ready. Logan placed his foot on the hydraulic lever and watched the chair rise. It hesitated where it normally stopped and then continued on. Logan swallowed hard. Wow! Boone looked down. How much farther? Um, you'll see. As the chair hoisted closer to the ceiling, Logan prayed under his breath. Oh, Lord, let Boone be safe. The ceiling turned translucent before it swirled, causing the sound of rushing wind. Logan and Boone watched in stunned awe. Wait! Stop! Boone scooted down into the chair. This is high enough! Logan looked outside and prayed that no one would pass. Boone screamed as the top of the chair hit the ceiling, and then stopped screaming when the ceiling expanded upward. Logan placed his hand on his chest, trying to stay calm. As soon as the bottom of the chair cleared the top of the ceiling, the chair disappeared, as if the ceiling gulped it whole. Logan released the lift and circled the chair as his pulse raced. He took deep breaths, trying to still his anxious heart. The chair slowly returned to the floor, without Boone. How am I going to explain this to Betsy? The angel he had seen in his dream appeared in the waiting room. No harm will come to him, Logan. Although the enemy will set traps to hinder him, this is an intense lesson from the Lord God to draw Boone out of a self-induced destructive path. Pray that his journey will be swift and sure. He smiled, nodded, and disappeared. Logan looked at the ceiling and then opened the door connecting to his house. The attic ladder was in the hallway. Logan pulled the string dangling from the ceiling and raced up the ladder. He fumbled to find the attic light switch. The fluorescent light flickered, then came to life. There was no change in the attic. Logan huffed in frustration as he flicked the light off and returned to the barber shop. Is this another dream? Regardless of his doubts, he sat in the waiting room, staring at the empty barber chair. This can't be real. Then finally believing that maybe it was, he prayed, Whatever you have planned for Boone, do it quickly, Lord. <laughs>